Okay, welcome to part five of our tutorial. Um, this is going to be creating our blueprint for our forward facing tree and then hopefully exporting that and actually viewing that in game. Okay, so blueprint editor two is what we need. So I've just gone to my Railworks folder and I'm gonna double click blueprint editor two. So there's the blueprint editor. There's my source folder, there's my developer folder. There's Transpennine, that's my product, and there's Scenery, and here's our TSD tree. So we need to create a new forward-facing blueprint. So right-click the TSD tree folder and go Add, New Item. We're looking for a Scenery blueprint, so click on Blueprint, scroll down here, Scenery blueprint, and give your blueprint an appropriate name, TSD underscore tree dot XML. Okay. Um, let's assign a few basic bits of information. So TSD tree, and in the browser, so in the actual asset editor in game, we want it to appear as TSD tree. What category shall we assign it to? Uh, foliage and water would be the normal category, I believe. So let's do that one. Um, then we need to set up um, some basic settings. So the geometry, that's the IGS file. So I believe you can right click this and go copy as provide a product. And I think we can paste that in here. Excellent, we can do. Um, it's not going to be collidable. In other words, if a train hits it, it's not going to cause the train to derail. Um, so we don't want that to happen if somebody accidentally places a tree in the middle of a track. Um, Obviously, in reality, it would derail it, but you know, this is only a game. Um, okay, and then we need. Um, I'm trying to remember what else we need. Just bear with me one second. Well, that actually pretty much is, is all the settings that we need. That um, um, that's that's enough to get us an export. But before we can export, we haven't got a texture in the right format. If I save this now, and go file, export. It's going to say failed and why did it fail it says unable to find forward facing quad ace let's go and have a look at our texture folder again so there's our texture folder you see we've got our png uh, file but no ace file so how do we make an ace well there's a fantastic tool called rwace tool which will convert images into ace files ready for the export um, I'll give you a link for where you can get hold of this and where you can download this on the forum uh, thread and also in the video description. So let's run our RWACE tool and we're going to convert a single image. Go and find that image file. There it is. Open and just default options are fine. Let's click convert. Okay. So we go and have a look at our um, forward facing tree folder. So now you can see in our TSD tree folder we've got this ace. So let's try and do our export again and see what happens. Export. Go. Oh, it says success. Okay. So what has the export actually done? Well, let's have a look at our folders. So this is our source folder where all the original stuff is. So when you do an export, all it does is take that source and stick it in assets but in the game format, exported in game format. So I get Nockins, Transpennine, uh, Scenery, TSD tree looks appeared. Um, here's my bin file, here's my shape file, and there's my textures. Now all the cost and TGT files, you don't actually need them. We're gonna leave them for, for now, but once you've actually finished and got this all sorted, you can delete the TGTs and the costs and the cost TGTs as well. Uh, none of those are needed. Okay, so now we've got that exported, let's see if we can actually view this in game. Uh, fingers crossed this is actually going to work. Okay, so here is our train simulator up and running. I don't even know if this is going to capture with my video capturing software, so fingers crossed this works. Otherwise I'm just wasting my time. So I'm going to go build and I'm going to create, uh, very quickly just create a new route um, just for testing this in. I'm not bothered what it is, let's just go with Newcastle to York is fine. Create test TSD tree create 
So that's now loading into game. Let me just give it a few moments. Okay, so there we are in game. Um, and first thing we need to do, we need to enable our object filter for our developer that we used. So whatever developer you use, to say, please don't use my developer folder, use whatever you like. There's my developer folder, there's my product. We'll tick that box and enable it. And now if we go into foliage water, hopefully if we click T, we should find TSD tree, fingers crossed. Oh, there it is. We've got something in there. Uh, fantastic, it's actually worked. Um, so there's our tree look. Um, let's place that in game. And as we pan around it, you see how it's constantly facing us. It's a forward facing tree. It doesn't matter where I go, it faces us. Um, and can we select it look? So you can select it and that's our selection box working here. If I try and go straight on top of it and look straight down. Ah, pretty accurate there. You can see that I can actually select it when I get to oh, almost on top of it. Okay. It's kind of doing what I wanted it to do. Okay. All right. I hope you've uh, enjoyed that video. Um, oh gosh, my camera's all over the place here. Uh, it's very jumpy. I think it's because I'm doing video capture at the same time, which is making it very jumpy. Um, I'm just trying to do some testing. I'm going to go very, very close to it to see if it disappears because that's a common problem that at certain angles it will disappear. You can see it's kind of, it is doing it, it's disappearing there. That's all to do with origins and things like that. Um, but it's not a problem. It's staying visible for most of the time. That's uh, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so there you go. That's how you get a forward-facing tree in-game uh, from um, using Blender and the free exporter and just free tools. Um, hope you've enjoyed watching it. Um, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.